Hi everybody. In this video we're going to learn how to color our terrain that we made from our height map. So let's go over the boilerplate 3JS code. So here I'm importing three module JS and orbit controls. I'm creating a scene with a background of sky blue. I'm creating my camera and a setting position of that camera and I'm creating my renderer and I am creating my orbit controls and I'm creating and adding a light to the scene. So now let's add our height map. Alright, I'm loading my height map located in my images folder using a new 3 texture loader and I'm putting it in the object bump texture and I'm setting the bump scale of that texture to 300 and that will exaggerate the amount of displacement of the vertices in the height map. So how are we going to color this terrain? we're going to use shaders. We're going to use the vertex shader. So the vertex shader, we're going to get the position of a vertex on this plane in this height map and then we're going to get its color value based on its position in the height map. And then we're going to use a fragment shader to color that particular vertex. So the higher up that vertex is, we're going to give it a different color than it is when it's lower. And we're going to use the smooth step function to do that. The smooth step function interpolates the difference between two values. So if the two values are very close together, you're going to get a very hard color change. There's not going to be much gradient. But if the two values are farther apart, then you're going to get a much bigger gradient or a, a softer color change. So let's create some uniforms. Uniforms are variables that 3JS can use with our shader. Our uniforms will be in the object uniforms and the first uniform will be bump texture and its value will be bump texture the height map that we loaded up here and the second uniform will be bump scale and its value will be bump scale this bump scale that we declared up here so the bump texture will give us the color of the vertices in that height map and the bump scale will give us the position of the vertices how much they've been displaced and if we console log the uniforms you'll see that it returns an object. Here's our two uniforms, bump scale, 300, bump texture, value texture, which is this texture that we loaded up here. Right on. Let's create our shader material. So I'm creating a new three shader material and I'm putting it in the object ground material. So in the shader material, I'm passing in three things, the uniforms, the vertex shader, and the fragment shader. The uniforms we made up here, so that's what this is, uniforms. The vertex shader we haven't made yet, but we'll do that right away. We're going to get it by getting that element by ID, vertex shader, and getting the text content in that element with the ID of vertex shader. And we're doing the same thing with fragment shader. We're getting the text content of the element with an ID of fragment shader. And then I'm just treating this material like any other material. I'm creating my geometry for my plane and then I'm passing in the geometry and the material into this new mesh object called ground. I'm just rotating it minus 90 degrees to make it flat. I'm setting its Y position to minus 100 and I'm adding it to the scene. And here I have my animate call for my animate loop and I have a resize handler to handle resize events. So what we need to focus on here is writing up the shaders, the vertex shader to get the position of the vertices and the fragment shader to color them based on their height. So we're going to do that at the beginning of the program. So let's scroll up to the very top and you'll see above this script tag where we started importing our modules and with our code we're going to write two more script tags above it. One for the fragment shader and one for the vertex shader. So right at the beginning of the body section is the vertex shader. So the vertex shader will shift the vertex position along the normal. So the vertex normal is the direction of the vertex. So it's going to shift it by the bump scale value, one of our uniforms, and the height map color value. I'm not going to get too much into the vertex shader. I'm just going to point out a few things. I'm going to spend more time in the fragment shader. Here's our two uniforms, bump texture and bump scale. And here we're declaring a variable V amount. This will be the red color value of a texel. A texel is one pixel in a texture. This is essentially our height map value. It's a color from white to black, but we're going to just get the red value 
because it'll be a proxy for black and white because it should be a black and white photo. So here in this function we're going to get the color value of the texture at a given coordinate and put it in bump data and then in this V amount variable we're going to get the red value of that texel at a particular coordinate and then we're going to pass that into our color shader and then down here we're just calculating the new position of that vertex after it's been affected by the height map and the bump scale. Okay, so let's look at our fragment shader, the coloring of the pixel. Okay, so here's our fragment shader. So the fragment shader deals with the color of that pixel. So here we're bringing in that V amount variable, and then we're gonna use it in our function here, main. You notice here that this color is all blue. So how did we do that? I used a smooth step function from the minimum height. So my minimum height was 0.01 to the maximum height was 0.99. And that is the whole height of this height map, right? So this whole height map is painted blue, which is this color here, RGB. There's no red, there's no green, and one is blue. So all these values are from zero to one. But we only want to color the water blue. So this is no good. Even if I make this height lower, the whole thing is still colored blue. It just maxes out at a lower value and then everything above it is the highest color it can be. So what do we have to do? We have to subtract something from these values. So let's try that. Now we see that the water stops at a maximum height and this is the maximum height value, 0.35. So point, at 0.35 out of 1, the water will stop. So these values control the gradient at the edge and these values will control the gradient throughout that whole color, the water color. So you can see the water color goes from a very dark color to a very light blue and then has a very hard edge because these two values are very close together. I can make them farther apart, but it wouldn't look like water anymore. It, it, it looks like it's crawling up the sides of the mountains because water has a pretty defined edge, right? So th that's why these two values are close together. And if you wanted to change the color of the water, you could play with these values, right, to give you kind of an icy color, but I'm gonna leave it just at blue. Remember, V amount is our height map color, and you could change that by dividing it by a number to give you a darker color, or dividing it by a decimal, which would give you a lighter color, and then we're gonna put it into this vector four for the fragment color. So we can add different categories for different levels. We could add a sand level, a grass level, a rock level, and a snow level, right, depending on what you wanted. So let's add a sand level. Okay, so now I've added a layer of sand just around the water. So I've changed this gradient to these values, and this gradient to these values, the edge gradient to these values, and the sand has this RGB color. And then I added the sand to this frag color. So this frag color is adding all the color values of these substances together. So let's add another layer. I'm gonna add a grass layer. And you'll see that the heights for these values are more or less separated. And these ones overlap because I want the color gradients at the edges to have a nice transition between them. And now I'm gonna add a rock layer. Okay, so I got some brown rock showing up as a layer. And I might adjust these later. And then I'm gonna add a snow layer for the top. There we go. So my snow layer will start appearing at 0.7, it will max out at 0.8, and everything above at 0.8 will be pure white. And I added all the different substances to the frag color here. 